Hello, everybody, and welcome to a special little episode of Haunt Talk. We've kind of deemed that this week is going to be like theme park week because <laughs> the other videos are probably already up, but we're doing um, like it's more of a vlog of Cedar Point will be up this week. This episode is going to be about Halloween Horror Nights. Um, there's going to be another episode of kind of about Halloween Horror Nights. We'll get to that in a minute. And also coverage on SeaWorld, Orlando's first ever Hello Scream event. Um, same name as Bush Gardens because they are the same company. Uh, but yes, uh, in today's video, we are going to be talking about our experience of going to HHN, and we're going to be ranking our favorite of the 10 houses. Now, this year, we're not really going to be talking about scare zones because when we went, it was rainy, so there's a couple we didn't really get to experience, and we only went one night for HHN this year, and we did the R RIP tour yep. as well. So we're going to kind of be talking about the RIP tour, um, and you know, and if it's worth it, and all of that kind of stuff uh, as well here. All right. So um, they actually had 10 haunted houses this year because it was a big anniversary. They had 10 haunted houses and five, five scare zones. Five scare zones. Mm -hmm. um, so, and they kind of like, uh, they brought back a lot of their icons from years past. But of course, the big right. one was Jack. Yeah. If you're not familiar... <clears throat> Halloween Horror Nights has been famous. They kind of make like a mascot for the year and they call him like the icon. And Jack is a clown and he was, I think it was like 2002, I think. Something, eh, it was early 2000s when Jack like was introduced because they did like a survey to see like basically what the biggest fears was. And yeah. of course, death and clowns. So they, they were like, well, let's mesh them together and have a murder clown. And yeah. I don't, I feel Jack like became. it wasn't as outdated as it is now when Jack became like an icon to begin with now of course everybody does a psychotic clown but jack has more than just like he actually has a backstory just like everything with hhn yeah and uh all of that now before we get into the top 10 here i guess we will say because you know we we said about doing the rip tour and it is not cheap at all if you're going to no. orlando but i think you know especially if you're in a time crunch if you have the money i think that it is definitely worth it because, I mean, you get your own personal tour guide that takes you to the front of every house. Yes. Uh, so you just get you get to do that. There's also special like places where you get to go take a break. You get to go to like bars that the general public's not allowed to go. Now, alcohol or anything like that is not included. You do get like little hors d'oeuvres before your tour begins, um, and it doesn't involve a lot of walking. It takes like four to five hours to complete. Um, you know, because again, you're going to ten different haunted houses. And you do get a little bit of break, but yeah, so make sure to go prepared knowing that you're going to walk. You're going to walk. You're going to walk your <laughs> ass off. Our blisters on our feet are proof of this. <laughs> um, and that's the thing that we also, because we decided to do the, um, and this is going to be a following video where we talk about this, um, daytime, they have like daytime tour of the haunted house with lights on, you kind of get behind the scenes. And we're going to talk yeah. about that in a future episode, but we did the RIP tour, we're there to like after midnight, mm -hmm. and then our daytime tour was 8.30 in the morning, so yeah. it was kind of a rough turnaround. Maybe don't plan that that way for yourself <laughs> when you go. <laughs> Maybe don't, yeah, do that. Plan accordingly, we did not. <laughs> but yeah, if you're interested more in like the actual themes of each house, you can go right to their website and all of that too. We're not going to sit here and list all of them to begin with, we're just going to kind of go through... Um, our top 10. Yeah, we'll oh, give not like our top a, 10, our, a our, little description, <laughs> but not favorite. like go into detail. Yeah. Right, exactly. So let's kick things off with our number 10 favorite house, and that was Welcome to Scary. Um, Scary, well, Cary, Ohio is a um, actual small town in Ohio, and one of the um, art directors is actually from that. And a lot of these haunted houses like the independent um, idea ones, uh, use this little small town as a base for all this bad stuff that happens in this little small town. Right. And basically the Welcome to Scary House is a combination of everything they've done 
that was based in Cary, Ohio. So you had like Meets Meat and um, HR, Blood and Guts, and a bunch of other like different favorite things that they had through the years that were based in Cary, Ohio. Um, it was, it was cool. Yeah, it was cool. Um, I was really excited about this one, especially, you know, us being from Ohio, but, um, eh, it was just all right to me. (laughs) Like the scares weren't super great in this one for Mm -hmm. me. And like the scenes just didn't, um, there was a couple ones like, like the butcher shop scene was cool, but you also had Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is doing like the cannibalistic butcher shop thing too. And I'm just like, I don't know. It didn't really... It didn't really do much for me. It wasn't bad by any means. None of the haunts were bad. They're all pretty elaborate and cool looking. But this one, yeah. I just, I don't know. It was one of our least least favorites. Um, speaking of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, number nine is going to be Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I didn't really dislike this house. Um, and we'll talk more about it in the in the in in the daytime tour. Actually, I didn't realize how gross this house was, but it is very <laughs> gross. There is a lot of blood and guts in it. And smells and smells. Um, lots of leather faces. Leather faces out of every orifice. If you don't like chainsaws, this thing's going to be a nightmare for you. <laughs> if you don't really care. Um, really, like, chainsaws aren't, like, a big fear of yours, then, you know, this house probably is going to land a little bit, um, flat, but the other thing is, like, they've done it before, you know, too, this is kind of a repeat house a little bit of a ways, they've changed things up, Yeah. but it is a bit of a repeat house, now, I never went through it, um, when it, you know, the, in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre version, but, yeah, it, it was okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so moving on to our number eight house, which is Revenge of the Tooth Fairy. Now they actually had this house open last year to guests that were going there. Um, they did not have HHN last year because of the situation that happened. Um, but they did have this house available. If you happen to be at the park, you were allowed to get into this house. And I really liked this house. Um, I really liked the concept of it. The concept of Mm -hmm. it. Um, It kind of like the reason it's kind of low on the thing is because a lot of the scares were kind of ruined, and uh, yeah, because of the weirdness that. Well, right. (laughs) Well, yeah. So this year, you know, um, one of the things that really dampened a lot of the haunts. um, Some of the little vloggers from Florida like to say that it doesn't, but it really does is for some reason Universal felt perplexed to put plexiglass up, like weird rubber plexiglass in front of where the scare actors go, you know, to to you know, to help keep us safe. But yet not all of them are. All the scare actors outside, they combine you into like a sardine can on all the rides. There's no six foot thing, but for some reason scare actors and also mind you, the way Universal does scares, they don't actually speak. So it's not like they're getting in your face and yelling at you. They literally have a pedal that they push that turns on a scene and makes noises. So they really using the risk of them like because the most they do is they'll reach out like that. Yeah. Like they've never really came up well, they not never, but in the last like 10, 15 years, never really came out of their hide hole because the way Universal designs their haunts is because so many people are going through them, they just kind of completely conga line it and they just have actors in different timing zone time sections and they hit a pedal makes a loud noise they come out and something else will say and they'll kind of act like they're saying the thing. Yeah. so why they think they need the plexiglass is confusing to me just make it so they don't just make sure the actors know not to come up and like scream yeah. in your in your face and a lot of the actors also have had uh, masks on as right. well and maybe it's because they want to keep the actors safe i guess but i I don't know. It just, it really ruins something because you can see it and you can predict almost every scare. Yeah. And yeah, that really did suck um, that that is the thing that happened. Hopefully that will not be a thing in uh, 2022. But I do like the concept of it. I really like the opening room. It looks like a storybook when you go in there. Um, and that's kind of the thing is the the whole concept of the house is that a kid basically tries to cheat the tooth fairy. Um and the Tooth Fairy finds out and, like, murders his whole family and gets servants in this, like, mansion yeah. <laughs> lav- lavish thing. Yeah. Um, it was pretty cool, though. Like, even, like, they have servants, and at the end, like, all, this, all the bells are ringing from the family trying to get hold of the servants, but the servants were the first ones to get murdered, so mm-hmm. they couldn't help them. <laughs> um, and the next one, um, number seven, was HHN Icons Captured. So I guess the story of this one was there's another icon named 
like fear, who's like fear itself, right? Yes. And you're inside of his lantern because he's the one that like makes Halloween, basically. Yeah, he's the one that creates it. I mean, he basically makes the fear that is Halloween. Yes. And you're inside his lantern, and what he has basically done is he's captured all of the Horror Nights icons from past and has them basically battle to the death. Is what's going on in here. And they each have like their own little room inside there and stuff like that. And then at the end of the um, house, there's actually a throne. And um, I guess every 45 minutes or so, they actually change who's going to be on the throne. And it will change. It'll be, maybe it'll be Jack. Maybe it'll be the caretaker. Who knows? But, it, you know, if you go through the haunt numerous times in a night or, you know, you're there for numerous nights, it might be somebody different. Right, exactly. And I would recommend going through the haunts more than once if you can. We just had yeah. so many other things we were doing. We didn't do another night yeah. of it, which is one of the main reasons we want to do RIP as well. Um, I like this one. I feel like the concept of them actually battling didn't come across that much. It was more like... I generally am not a huge fan of the mashup ones where it's like every room's like a different like thing. Where this is what it was like. Chance had her section. Lady Luck had her section. Mm-hmm. Jack had his section, of course. But none of it felt like they were battling each other. No, it almost seemed like they were going after us more right. than they were battling each other. But at the end, there's a winner. So I don't really understand that part. Yeah. But it was a pretty cool haunt. The facade was pretty cool, which this is one of the daytime ones. So we will talk more about yeah. that in that one. But um. Yeah, I mean, still overall, I liked it, but just, you know, I was kind of, I had a little bit higher hopes for this one, I guess, as well. I thought this would be in the top when it's, you know, kind of, it's in the bottom half. (laughs) So, moving on to our number six is Case Files Unearthed Legendary Truths. Um, This actually, I guess this is like a running theme with some of their stuff, Um, this legendary truth and stuff like that. They have, like... It's, like, this group that, like, looks for different, like, paranormal things or something like that. And basically what this is, it's um, a private investigator ends up collecting talismans of evil. And he keeps them up in his attic. And then he disappears. And years later, somebody finds them, opens them up, and all these, like, monsters just all like just attack the earth at the same exact time and it's basically it it, it's all the different kind of monsters you could think of like like there was like cthulhu kind of monsters and things like that and they all are just attacking and it's like like early 90s like the guy who found these Mm -hmm. talisman after this detective disappeared he's got like a mullet (laughs) i did like that i thought that was kind of funny i'm like oh he's got a mullet (laughs) Yeah, it did have a really cool feel to it. Yeah. Um, I didn't get scared many of these time, but I did like the creatures that yes. they had. They actually had people in like full bodies, prosthetics, um, mm-hmm. or costuming, whatever you want to say. Um, it, it was it was really cool. I that was the main thing I liked about this one was the aesthetics. Uh, at one point, you like travel, like you start off in the offices and you go through the sewer, and then you go up to the Kitty Cat Club, which of course is cool because both the detective office and the Kitty Cat Club are. In Universal Studios, and they're right across from each other. And we were told by the RIP tour guide that they built the Kitty Cat Club. They found the old blueprints for the Kitty Cat Club of what I guess it was supposed to be originally and, like, made it to scale because it was never actually built, which is kind of interesting. But also it's kind of small, so we're like, wow, this is really tiny. Yeah, like, if that is actually how it was supposed to be built, it's really going to only fit, like... Three tables. <laughs> and they had a live singer there too, which was cool. Yeah, it's the first and only house ever in HHN history that has a actual live singer in it, which was pretty cool. Right. Um, next one is, we put number five is Beetlejuice. Now, there's not a lot to say about this one. It's Beetlejuice. Yeah. That's really cool. Like they did, it, it follows the storyline in the movie. You get to see a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, of course, the shrimp hand scene, the waiting room of, um, what do they call it? Is that it called exactly? Like the waiting room of death or whatever. Yeah. Um, but that's really cool. He like heckles you when you're first entering it. Mm-hmm. You're like kind of walking up this ramp and he's up there and he's like talking to you and stuff. And it's kind of neat because he's not actually, he's um, at the beginning, he's not canned. So he's actually Correct. talking he to actually you is and talking. He's like up heckling on you. Thing. At the end of it though, it was canned. He was just pushing a button and 
oh, yeah. stuff was coming out and he was pretending to say it. But at the beginning, he does actually, like, interact with you slightly. Um, but this was another one of the houses that they had open last year for, for people one who day, were lucky one. enough. Yeah, they only this had only it for one day. For one day. Because they basically, something about rights where uh, they kind of were, like, forced to do that. I don't yeah. think they wanted to, but they had to. Um, overall, I liked it quite a bit. Um, it wasn't very, it wasn't, it was one of the ones kind of like Ghostbusters where it's not meant to be a scary, it's more meant to be fun. Yeah. More nostalgic um, than anything else. Right. Pretty good though. Um, moving on to number four, which is Bride of Frankenstein mm-hmm. Lives. Um, now a couple years ago they did have a house that was Universal Monsters and it was all the monsters you could think of, including Bride of Frankenstein. Yeah. Um, this is basically, a, it's supposed to be a sequel to the movie Bride of Frankenstein. Um, if you're familiar with the movie, I'm going to go through it real quick. If you're familiar with the movie, at the end, you see the bride. She sees Frankenstein's monster. She screams at him. He feels rejected. He says, we belong dead, and pulls the castle down and basically kills them. Well... This is a sequel to it, and he doesn't actually kill both of them. And the bride is actually like, oh my god, what did, what happened? I need to save him. So she becomes the doctor, so to speak, yeah. the mad scientist, and tries to revive Frankenstein's monster. And it's basically, you're in this lab, and you're seeing all the different things she's doing. She's using different monsters to... Bring well, him back to life well, and stuff like that. No, what she's doing is she knows the vampire blood makes people uh, makes people internal, so she wants Dracula's blood and all of the vampire... Dracula's, like, little ladies mm-hmm. are coming to kill her because yeah. she's trying to steal Dracula's blood to bring because he's immortal and she's trying to give the blood to Frankenstein. So that's the whole thing is the vampire ladies are, like, attacking you throughout the thing because they're mad that she stole Dracula's blood. Um, it, it was good. I, I like this one quite a bit. I like Universal Monsters House better. Yeah. Uh, it is fun that Universal has the liberty since they own this IP to like, oh, this haunted house is going to be a sequel. Yeah. To this, you know, old school original monster movie. Yeah. I thought the concept was really fun and it was a cool house. Um, this one is decently scary. They had a lot, they had quite a few scare actors with the vampire ladies and stuff like that. And of course, costuming is really top notch and all of that as well. Uh, on the number three, which was Puppet Theater, Captive Audience, this one was, this one is really creepy, the aesthetics of it. Mm-hmm. Basically, the storyline is, uh, is with that earthquake, and it was in 1960, what? 1906. Oh, in 1906. Oh, I thought it was. 1906. Oh, yeah. 1906. There's like a big earth, that big earthquake in San Francisco. Um, and this is like a theater that was in there, and it got destroyed, and a lot of the people have that were murdered there or got killed there or didn't get killed there have just kind of turned into like cannibalistic monsters and they're like turning other people into puppets yes. because the show must go on. The show must go on. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's real messed up and yeah. make sure if you want to see some pictures of the props and stuff for that we did this the daytime tour that we pictures of some of the real twisted things that are in there. Um, this one is pretty creepy. A lot of good jump scares. They had, like, people pretending to be puppets. They had, like, fake marionettes. <laughs> there are some really big scenes in this one, too. Yes, very big scenes. And it, it's just, it's really, it was really interesting and just, it, it was just so odd. Just because, like, you're, like, weaving in and out of being, like, behind the scenes in the theater. And then you're in the audience. And um, the red curtain is constantly throughout the whole thing. Yeah. And it's just... It's a, it's, it's just a really interesting concept because, yeah, it's basically these people just went mad. They're trapped in this place and they're just like, oh, we need to do stuff. We need to perform. And they just butcher people in order to yeah, make new puppets work their craft. And stuff. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 I really like that one, though. I, I really like the aesthetics of it. And the facade was really cool, too. Yeah. Um, number two... We put The Haunting of Hill House. This, of course, is based off of The Haunting of Hill House on Netflix. Yes. And it follows that storyline. You get to see characters like the bent neck lady. Um, you know, the tall the, man. The tall man. And something that's also cool is it goes back and forth between being the dilapidated house 
And, yeah. you know, the house, um, you know, when it was when they were there in 92, I think is when it was. I think that's when they were there yeah, as kids. Yeah, 90 something, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it switches back and forth just like the show does, and that's really cool. If you haven't seen the show, it's going to kind of spoil it for you. I'm not going <laughs> to give spoilers here, but I would definitely, if you're going to Halloween Horror Nights, if you're not going to watch anything else, make sure you watch Haunting of Hill House before you go. Or yes. else, because if you're trying to follow along what's going there, and especially if you do a daytime tour, they will spoil the movie because it's important to what they're going to talk about. Yes, because um, a lot of the scares like really are emphasis on spoilers. Yeah, like the Bent Neck Lady alone is a big jump scare, and if you haven't seen the series, that is a huge spoiler to find out what that actually is. Yes. Um, very cool, though. If you're a fan of the show, the facade for this is amazing. Again, oh we'll have pictures of that. In the daytime video, I'm not going to put all those pictures in this because I want to save that for that video when we're actually talking about it because me and Kim took a lot of pictures. Yes. Um, so yep. that leads us to our number one house, and that would be Wicked Growth, Realm of the Pumpkin King. Yes, this was really good. <laughs> yes. Um, they always have, like, every year they always have, like, really cool, elaborate, beautiful, at least that we've been there. Um, a pumpkin kind of area. And, and people tend to respond to that. Well, yeah. Yes. And this was a house this year because usually it's a scare zone and you walk through, um, it's in like the Central Park area and it's got the trees and everything like that. Well, this is basically a house that is like that with yes. the pumpkins everywhere. And it's very old school. So like... You're in the realm of the Pumpkin King, and he's got minions, which include witches and yeah. goblins and everything you could think of that's Halloween-themed, you know, right. skeletons, things like that. Cause they're, yes, because they're trying to summon him, and he's basically the creator of what you know as Halloween, yes. and you may or may not get to meet him at the end. <laughs> and this is another one we did for that daytime tour, so if you, this yes. one, a um, lot of cool pictures from this one, so if you want to see those, make sure you watch that too. Um, but this one is also the scariest. Oh, one. yeah. They had a couple, they had a couple spots in this one where it would look like it's full fencing, but it's actually made out of like, uh, not Velcro, but like cloth, like basically, like a stretchy material. Of some and sort. they would just yeah. open it and just reach out at you because yeah. it looked like there was just a wall and it would just separate. Very, um, very innovative. Super cool. Yeah. Yeah, but this one, like the aesthetics, the smells, um, I really like the witch scene. That was really yes. cool. There's like a book that like, it's all lit up and like the there's like this um, ritual that they say, mm -hmm. and it's on this book, and it's like the way they have it lit up and stuff is just it's just really neat. And there's yeah. like this thing that comes out of the cauldron, and the witch is like, "Get back in there!" <laughs> Apparently, it's a whole thing. Like you actually kind of have to walk slow if you actually want to see it all. Like I actually did walk slow, and I think it was only because the line was kind of going slow in there when yeah. we were in there. And um, we did actually get to see that whole scene, and it was like, oh, this is actually really cool. Because, yeah, she wasn't doing canned stuff. She was actually doing this stuff, and it was it was actually really, really cool. It was really it was really funny and, like, humorous, and they were still getting you at because you were distracted by the scene, and, and then, of course, they are getting you from all the other corners and stuff like that. It was really, it was a really good haunted house. But, yeah, it had a ton of scares in there. But yeah, that's our top 10 houses. I wish we could have done them more than once, but yeah. it was a lot of fun to go through them. I wish we could have done the scare zones more as well. But, you know, with the daytime tour, we just really didn't want to, after doing this all night, then going back all day, um, we really didn't want to do Halloween Horror Nights that night because, you know, that went from like 8.30 to 3. We were there and it was just like, ugh. That was a bit much, um, and we wanted to do SeaWorld as well, so make sure you also keep an eye out for that video. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, click the bell notification so you know when all of those things come out. Because there's going to be now that we're back, now that we're back in Ohio, uh, you know there's a lot more to, a lot more places to go, a lot more reviews to do after this week. The theme park week is done, and also don't forget that we do have a Patreon that you can join. We actually finally <laughs> we got our first um, patron. His name is James Barger. I think it's how you say his Barger. James last Barker. name yes thank you very much for yes, that thank you absolutely and as promised um you will be getting a card from us here i'll reach out to you and all that if you're watching this video um but yes make sure to check that out if you're not sure what we offer there's always links in the description you can click it it shows you what each tier does i think it goes as low as i think we have a five dollar one and then it go yeah yes, it's so you it can starts at five so five. you don't even have to spend all that much i mean that's like a right like a cup of coffee at starbucks just helps us out because you know 
it's not cheap to do this. And we were trying to do more outside of this as well. If you look back for this last year, we did a lot of like creepy places vlogs. We do a little bit of food tasting and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And let us know any other ideas that you have that you'd like to see us do that aren't particularly haunted houses because, again, we can't do that all year. Yeah. We're still going to do it this time of year. Um, if you want to see us do escape rooms, we do have a video of that. We just uploaded yes. for Unlock the Adventure. So that's a thing if you're interested in that. Um, watch that video. But that being said, thank you very much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.